Meanwhile, Japan was faced with another cumbersome problem. It was becoming increasingly difficult to find locations to dispose of the large quantities of industrial waste that were coming from factories, construction sites and the like. With nowhere else to go, industrial waste, discarded cars and household appliances were taken from the cities and often dumped in the less populated mountainous areas and on remote islands. One of the many islands in the Inland Sea, Teshima, literally Island of Plenty, is in Kagawa Prefecture. Typical of rural Japan, much of the island's younger population has left for the cities. Those who remain earn a living farming and fishing. In the 1970s, a disposal company began to illegally dump industrial waste here on the island. Much of this waste was old car parts from the cities and contaminated, sometimes toxic, materials from factories. The company took to burning this waste and black smoke rose up from the site. Around this time, many of the island's residents were afflicted with asthma. The soot fell even here. It accumulated on chairs, which was a nuisance. When the wind blew from the west, we couldn't hang our laundry out to dry. The smell, the smell was awful. We were told that they had permission from the prefecture, so there was nothing we could do. The soot blew way to the east. The village head came down with asthma and died. He said, stop the smoke. It's painful when it comes, and he died. He complained, but they kept on burning it, and then he died. The residents of Tashima kept saying that we couldn't take it anymore. But no matter how much we complained, the prefecture wouldn't listen. Industrial waste was brought here for 13 years, despite repeated appeals to the prefecture. In 1990, the Hyogo Prefectural Police exposed this illegal activity, and Teshima became famous overnight. That day at sunrise, six helicopters were flying overhead, flying around over the island. I wondered what was happening. At the same time, more police than I could count landed on the island and exposed the situation all at once. This was on the national news at noon, live from Tashima. This country's worst case of the illegal disposal of industrial waste. That night a call came from the central fruit market saying they would no longer be handling any tangerines grown on Tashima. Tashima's farming and fishing products, once marketed as coming from a fertile, natural environment, were discredited and suffered a major setback. Dioxins, arsenic and all sorts of contaminants were detected in the vicinity of the industrial waste dumping site. All that remained of Teshima was the stigma of being home to industrial and other waste. In 1993, the residents filed a suit against Kagawa Prefecture for the removal of all industrial waste. In response to the prefecture's apparent intention to evade responsibility, Residents also demonstrated in front of the prefectural offices and in Tokyo. The 1,300 residents of this small island had been made to pay the price for abundant living elsewhere. Wanting others to know of this reality, they spoke out. When we ask people to understand what happened here, and there was a mountain of waste, when we asked for help, we were yelled at and told it was too late. I cried at times like that. Did we do something wrong? We didn't. And if we didn't take action, the world wouldn't understand what had happened. I began to wonder, what is the meaning of democracy? What is the meaning of fairness? I'd get angry and impatient. 
and the tears would well up. People might laugh when I say that, but when I felt that inexpressible desolation and anger, it came out in the form of tears. On June 6, 2000, a seven-year struggle with the prefectural government came to an end. The prefectural government apologized to the residents of Tashima and promised to remove and treat all industrial waste. The treatment of Tashima's waste has been going on for five years now, and 40% of it has been removed. After intermediate treatment on the island of Tashima, it is carried to a plant on a neighboring island where it is rendered non-toxic. But this treatment produces large quantities of carbon dioxide and places a heavy burden on the environment, although in a different form. The origins of this trash can be found in large profits, in lots of people riding around in cars and enjoying life. Ultimately, the part that no one was ready to take responsibility for was forced on us. People enjoyed themselves and made money pursuing their dreams, and we are made to bear what is left to pay their debt, and we don't even know who they were or where they lived. The people who will be the victims of the trash we continue to dispose of have yet to be born. They are the next generation. In this respect, the perpetrators and the victims are living in different times. This trash is a defective time capsule, that's how it looks to me. We have to think seriously about how to make products that don't generate waste. When we try to do something about trash once it's out there, by then it's already too late. The population of Teshima has dropped below 1,000, and those who remain continue to grow older. In an effort to give new life to the island's agriculture, to this place that was once derisively called Garbage Island, there are new projects in the works. You know that people see Tashima as an industrial waste island, right? So I was asked if I would get involved in agriculture, in strawberries, as a way of giving new life to the island. Mr. Tada gave up his life in the city and, determined to take up farming, returned home to Tashima. I think the struggle over industrial waste on Tashima it was a fight to get the blood circulating in Japan's extremities, in the country's toes. I think that's what the fight was about. I gradually came to understand that remote locations like Tashima, the tips of this country's fingers and toes, are also part of Japan. It can't be ignored that people live here too. The more I think about it, it's places like Tashima that have to be kept full of life. Japan needs to become a country that really cares about places like this. But development continues in the cities, nature disappears, and these rural areas are made to pay the price. We have to put a stop to this somewhere, or the whole earth will be destroyed.